All right, we got Ryan in here for part two, man. What <laughs> did you, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. It was really good. Uh, how's my mic coming in, guys? Perfect. Oh, yeah. Sounds Come, pretty good, man. Great. Coming Thank in you. hot. Ryan, let me ask. So, so uh, well, I was waiting. So Matt asked you the question, um, did you like it? What if Ryan came in here and was like, guys, I can't stand this show. They are just, it would have took that, like the tone would have just shifted all the way. And I mean, you know, like, I feel like you're one of those people who you try to see the good in, in, in everything, right. You try to, you try mm -hmm. to take the positive. There's, there's so much, there's so much we could kind of nitpick and point out or whatever, but truly, I don't know, man, besides like just being different from the books, it's still, it looks good. The music's good. What are you thinking? It has, there's so much good to the season. Um, you're, you're touching on, on the bullet points right there, but I think, you know, we're, we, we've all learned from, from past watching book adaptations into TV shows or movies that there's so much more in a book and a book series that you get than you can put into movies or TV shows. So I think we all understand that. And then it comes down to your loyalty to the books. Cause I'm that guy. I'm very loyal to the books. Cause I love, I'm a, I'm a huge reader. Got yeah. all the books behind me. That's just a, a touch of what I've got, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I do. I have that loyalty to the books, but I, I, you have to separate that when you look at the TV show. And that doesn't have to be a negative thing. No. Um, if if someone doesn't want to, that's fine. Because I totally get it. There have been yeah. books that I'm, I've seen movies or shows, and I'm like, no, this isn't working for me. I I like the books. I'm just going to stick with that. And I and I gave up. Yeah, um, yeah. And so yeah. I understand why people will do that with this because they're they're making some changes, which we expected. You guys talked a lot on that before the show aired this year, um, which is fine. But uh, I have been I've really been enjoying enjoying all the episodes. Uh, we're through six now. We I I think when you guys had talked about it in the past or where they would be when you have two episodes left, because the end of Eye of the World is such a big there's so much action and things going on that that would probably be the whole last episode. Then we've got a lot of ground to cover in this next episode. And, and I don't know, mm -hmm. I think you guys talked about it just a little bit ago. Are they going to get through all that in these next two episodes? Or are we going to have a season cliffhanger before the end of the eye of the world book? It's going to be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, two episodes. I have kind of felt like the episodes have been jam packed. Um, but then again, I'm, I'm looking for Easter eggs and all sorts of stuff. How, how do you feel about what they're actually fitting into one episode? Because Rafe wanted 10, but it sounds like we're going to get eight episodes. I mean, what are you thinking there? They're doing a really good job of they're packing a lot of information in, but they're doing a really good job of slowing down in some moments. Like I just did the rewatch of episode four earlier today, like I was telling you, and the scene where Lan is praying and Nynaeve comes out in yeah. the woods and, and catches him. And then he explains to her what her parents told her in the old tongue. It's just, it's things like that where you've got all kinds of, you got lots of speed going through. We're covering a lot of ground. We're covering a lot of detail and backstory. And then we slow down and we get something so deep and emotional and right. it's short. It's not a long drawn out scene. It's something really quick. It's a two minute scene, but it just pulls you out of a fast paced event. And yeah. then the, the viewer just sits there and now you're in your feels and you're emotional. Absolutely. And then they went into another scene after that, that was, that was emotional as well in a different direction. And it's just, they're doing a really good job with the pacing of the shows. I, from what I could say, I mean, we've got two more episodes left and we'll see where they cliffhanger the end mm -hmm. of season one, but I really enjoying what they're doing. And, um, I, I, I yeah. don't know where they're going with this. I don't know right. what they're doing with Matt. It's, it's, we're, we oh, that's it's, crazy. Well, it's, yeah. Let me ask you about Matt here in a second because I it, like that's, that's, that's something huge that happened. But I want to bring up something that you mentioned. So the idea, and I keep saying, I keep hammering this home that scene, that direct dialogue between Lane and Nynaeve is not necessarily in the book. And people like Matt for a first time read through were like, hey, that was kind of abrupt. This whole Lane and Nynaeve thing was, was a little abrupt. The show now, has you sitting he has you already sitting thinking like when when he walks away from the fire to go be with Moraine, you're sort of feeling like, oh man, I was hoping that would be something. They had a moment there. And it's just building all sorts of suspense and, and stuff, which is mm -hmm. really good. So there's tons of moments. The Suwan moment here. Um, mm -hmm. there are things between Matt and his family, parent and his wife, all this different stuff that again is different, but yet is adding context to the story 
that wasn't there in, in the books, but was implied. You know what I mean? That, that was there, but not directly on page. And I think that's the kind of uh, gene. I think it's very interesting for people who have read the books to get almost more out of it. Now, you mentioned Matt at the end. We'll just jump right, right, right to it. Uh, why? What do you think about all that? Like, 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 why does he <laughs> not go? Uh, I th- I, I I don't know where they're going with this. I, I went in three different directions while I was watching that. And then I, I paused what you guys were doing in here because I wanted to just sit there and think about it because that was so unexpected. Um, are they, is this something to do with the actor leaving the show or no longer being a part of the show and he is done for the season? I don't think so, but we have to, we don't know. So we have to look at that Maybe. as an option. I don't yeah. think so, but you know, Matt's Matt's going through the click throughs and and mm-hmm. it does look like they've made some changes at the last not the last second, but but after the writing and everything. So we don't know. It's gonna be interesting to find out. My feeling is this was a dramatic turn from the books that they wanted to because they have to shorten the wheel of time book into the first season if that's what they're trying to fit it all in. Um Maybe this was a way to connect Matt back with Pedon Fane and the dagger. Mm-hmm. And yeah. maybe we get Matt um, catching up with the group wherever they end up next week. Uh, maybe he catches up with Pedon or Pedon Fane captures him and the drag daggers involved and they go through the ways and they all meet up there at the end of next episode. I, we could, we could go that route yeah. or maybe he's going to find another, a different way. Maybe we're going to be introduced to portal stones. I can't imagine that's going to be the case because who Jeez, would be the yeah. one to introduce him to it right and get right. him to the group but we just don't know there could be a third third option out there right yeah no i i, I think it's it pot on fane coming in here at the end people are saying in the comments i would love to see more of him we've been hearing the whistling we've been he's been teased a lot uh less so far less of him has been more of him actually and now we need more of him in these final two episodes i think mm-hmm. uh to, to have him with that dagger uh maybe guiding i mean that would be kind of a He's a dangerous dude. And if Matt hasn't seen what we, the audience, have seen of Pot on Fane and we see him trusting Pot on Fane, that would be a crazy twist. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. He, yeah. and, and like I said, I, I was thinking that he might be captured by Pot on Fane. He could be entrapped by him or not entrapped, but, um, you know, hey, I need help. Uh, he's grasping for straws for some reason. Pot on Fane's a familiar face. It says, dude, dude. Let me get you caught up with your group. You know, right. maybe he has like a Ron Weasley moment. He's like, I shouldn't have bailed. I abandoned my right. team. I got to get back to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, that well, be- and on that note, so Matt just put up a comment about the idea that maybe, um, maybe he Tom. goes back to Tom. Yeah. To Tarvalin and he meets Tom because that's actually where Tom ends up in the books after uh, Kyrie. And he goes to Tarvalin and is just sitting there drinking like crazy. And, you know, Matt wanders into <laughs> to a tavern, sees Tom and he says, what are you doing here? Why would you come on? You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Do you, uh, so where do you guys think men fits in this season? Do you think that men's going to, do you think men's going to give prophecies and then they're all going to tell Moraine, Hey, we just talked to this girl and this is all what she said. And then that, then maybe Moraine gets, Maybe Moraine's there when, when Min's there, giving her prophecies, and mm-hmm. then that's where she's like, okay, well, now I know who it is. Yeah, yeah, Moraine reading those signs. So in Berylon, uh, that is what Moraine does. She pulls Min aside, looks down that hallway, and, and there are the boys, and she reads them. And so Moraine gets sort of some of that, and, and we learn a bit about it ourselves. So, yeah, keep some of the players or the dragons, air quote, in the dark, <laughs> but uh, have 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 men t- say something to Moraine or tell us what she sees. That would be fascinating, especially right here. They have a big opportunity. If you want to I think what a TV show can do, what, when I, what I like about TV shows when they do this is is when they foreshadow, right? They lay some groundwork, not just for the, like the next episode, but like seasons later. Like really say like mm-hmm. men can say much more here and see many more signs and symbols around individuals that take us further in the series than we ever um, thought we would get. So, yeah. Yeah. So cool. it's, 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 it's good. It's just going to be interesting to see, man, because there's only two episodes left. Ryan, what do you think? How did, what's going to be the villain? Are we just fighting Trollocs in the final episode or what do you, th- what do you think 
do, are we going to fight the vision we've been seeing in the dreams? Put on Fane, Matt, even possibly. Who knows? That that's the question. We really haven't been introduced to. I guess you could say we've been introduced to a villain, but just in short, quick snippets, what, three times so far in the episodes? I mean, we haven't even talked about, there hasn't been a lot of detail or, or conversation dialogue in the episode so far. So I think you guys were talking earlier about, do you think they're going to end this season? Not the dragon, whoever the dragon ends up being or, or which, you know, if it's all of them, are they going to end this season with that battle or is that going to be pushed into season two? And we're going to have some different ending to this season. It's, it's the question I think all the book readers are asking um, and probably the people that haven't read the books, because typically when you're watching a show um, something this big, you get a lot of detail about who the enemy is. We really don't have much other than there are Trollocs and there's fades out there. The eyeless, they call them, uh -huh. uh, but we don't have, we don't have a lot of detail right now everything about the season is just who's the dragon. Right. Yeah. And, and so here, here's an interesting point. You have this idea. So right. It's, it's like, why would you end a season on? Yep. We won. We beat him. It's all good. We're celebrating and that's it. Right. So what is that final kind of mm -hmm. scene? I think it might be, uh, it, it will probably be something behind the veil. It's probably going to be us seeing the dark one, shale ghoul or understanding maybe where, Maybe maybe our Aes Sedai are misinformed about the eye of the world and Shale Ghoul is still there. We go there, mm -hmm. a dark friend social takes place. Something at the at the you know, the great hunt is uh yeah. shows up and and we're like, oh shoot, like they all think they won. They all think it's over and done. And now Rand can just, you know, or whoever the dragon is, can go about his business and help unite and use his prestige or something to mm -hmm. do good. But yet we see behind the curtain here that we actually have an issue and that could be one of those like post credit things. It could be an extra scene at the end mm -hmm. that they would do. They could even have shot that later if they cast some more forsaken and have them meet up. I mean, that would be, that would be a mind blower right there is, is to have a yeah. Shamael or, or Balsam on step back in later and say, wow, you got your, you know, what kicked and <laughs> how, how did that, how did that feel? Right. I mean, that could be something we see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or they, you know, they talk about, well, guess who else just got released from, you know, the yeah, 13 yeah, yeah. Forsaken, we've got a couple more that have just been released. Now there's going to be a whole lot of chaos of multiple yeah. Forsaken in different parts of the map because that's where we're right. going in these next couple seasons. We're going to be all over the map. Yeah, I, 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 did, I did go back and count. looks like it was eight that we saw last episode that um, Steppen was sort of praying, I guess, to keep away was those eight um, Forsaken, which I would be fine with if we limit, if we cut it down, shorten it down. To, to th from 13. I mean, some of them, to be honest, are kind of jokes in the first place. Was it seven? <laughs> was it seven? I thought it was eight. I thought it was eight. I, think I, I thought I, maybe I counted wrong. But um, either, either, yeah. Um, either, either way, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I can't. Who's the ones we fight in the eye of the world as? They're kind of jokes. No, Agonor. Agonor. Uh, get him out of here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah he's yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a joke, right? He's a joke. Uh, yeah, it, Grin, yeah, Grin, uh, I would say that, yes, of those things, Grendel and Lanfear, well, were, were by far the 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 most obvious. Now, the, the one, though, I do, it would be interesting, and this is a Forsaken I do think is going to get cut. I think Osmodian's going to get cut. Okay. Um, yeah, just, just have because, it just Logan well, I think Logan is going to teach Rand how to channel. Okay, okay. Just yeah, be because Logan's way more prevalent. The dude who plays him is awesome. And it's mm -hmm. one sort of less cast member, which is, you know, a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think what the cool thing too, we'll see like, like what's I mean, awesome about later seasons is what they can do with the power. Now the Aes Sedai and what we can see and this whole situation. And we'll get to Ryan here in a second about this, the, the, the dream shard or the Teleron Riyadh or whatever it was. Um, what they can do now compared to what they will be able to do later when the Forsaken are released and they learn more powers is huge. So whether they learn that, so Rand will, yeah, he could, uh, initial teachings could be low gain. They might do something like that or Lanfear, Osmodian, someone, well, it would be Lanfear setting someone up for Rand. That, that could be, that could be possible still later on down the line, one of the eight or something. It, it would be really cool. Um, Ryan, what did you think of the whole Suan, Moraine. I've been asking for a couple episodes, like, what is that thing on her wall? Suan mm -hmm. had one as well. 
Um, I'm going to pull up a dream shard here on the, on the wiki and tell you guys what it is. But what were your thoughts just about that whole scene first? So uh, like I've said on uh, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, um, I'm only seven or eight books into the series and I have not read new spring. So I don't think in the books that I've read, they've talked about any sort of a relationship between those two. Is that something from the book or is it something that the show is creating? I, I just don't know. No, that's a, th it's a thing. Okay. Um, is it something that's hit it on in the books and I just completely missed it or, or forgotten? No, about it or there, is it where we're at, I, I forget which book it was, but there is one moment where, cause I remember asking as about this, I think it was maybe in the dragon reborn where Moraine says something about like loving someone. Yeah. It, well, it's so there is, there's that there's also, um, cause there is a huge spoiler. There is something that, that, uh, I can't reveal yet just right here. And people can say in the comments if they want about more rain and her love interest, which is interesting. Uh, there is a well, moment I though. I know who, I know who she, who is. She, she sort of has a, a yeah. love interest with later. Hasn't met him yet. Um, in the, it's in the show. Um, so in, in the book though, there is in the great hunt, you know, she does have that conversation with Suan and figures out like we learned that there's a closeness of friendship, which we which we kind of see here, which they did a good job of showing us that. But I think it is hinted at more in the new spring stuff, too, that she okay. was more intimate uh, with her than what we what we realized here. And then there's the whole, you know, she's not with land type of si situation, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, there. So, yeah, I mean, I think for some people it's just it's subtle. So the reason it will be a shock and the reason it's it's fine for you to be you and most people to be shocked that they did this, even veteran book readers, is it's subtle. It's not really mm -hmm. direct. They don't ever actually on page say that they were making out and doing that. They were this intimate. Right. It's just implied <laughs> down yeah. your knees. I mean, <laughs> that did make me laugh. I tell you what, the Omerlin thought on her punishment and she summoned her to her chambers. And I don't know what all went down, but um crazy cr crazy I, stuff. I did like what they did with that portrait though that was really cool yeah, that was cool yeah and so someone brought up a dream shard and this is a little bit later on in the series but a dream shard is this pocket dimension that's created by a channeler and it exists between the world the real world and then teleron riad um and the creator has control over the contents mm -hmm. uh of the room and they can in invite or bring people in and out of it now that was something that people from the age of legends had access to or knew about and could use i don't know that that's what this is if it's just they they is it is it a, a tear on griot that she traveled through to a place that they set up is it the dream world necessarily because they were physical and intimate there did they enter the dream world in the flesh that's another big question you can do that we see rand actually does that and is warned not to do it when he chases ravine uh, in into Teleron Riyadh in um, in uh, Fires of Heaven, so yeah, just just kind of kind of crazy scene there, and I, I thought it was awesome. I I think it is cool that they had a place where they could meet up that no one would know about. It's got to be top secret. It's not like she can just walk down to to the Omerlin's chambers, knock on the door, and hope no one sees because clearly Leandrin uh, knows what's going on, right? Leandrin comes out later and says, "I know you got Nynaeve. You got a Gwen, Matt, who's this Matt Cawthon guy you've got? Who are these folks, right? So she has eyes and ears. Each Aja has their own eyes and ears. So there's no way that they can physically meet up, I guess, in the real world. So they've either got to create a dream shard um, or they've got to go to Teleron Riyadh or something else that we don't really, really know about. So that was kind of fascinating, actually. They made that uh, location. Does it is it looks like it's exactly like her, the shack she was in as a kid at the, the opening of the episode, yes. right? Okay. Right. So, which is why I think people were hinting at the idea that you can, in a dream shard, you can make it what, what you want. You have control over that complete control. Um, but also you could go there. See, I don't know. And tell her on Riyadh, if the, if, if the hut has been destroyed or a building has been utterly destroyed in the real world, it is hard to see it. I think in tell her on Riyadh. And if I'm wrong, folks can correct me in, in the comments there, but her, it was destroyed because mm -hmm. um, they had the dragon's fang on there, uh, marking her out as as a possible, you know, dark one or a dark friend or something. And that was cool to see the the uh, proximity to Tear. And and someone said in our comments when we were watching it, tyrants don't have a whole lot to do with those who can channel. They don't like channelers and so on. So yeah. So here we have some uh, uh, Phil Snowden, I believe, is his name Steve. Steve. Wow. Who 
is Steve. Is he a green man? Someone said that. I don't think we've seen him yet, have we? Uh, someone said that that we might have seen him, but I don't think so. Like, like we would have seen him, seen him. You know what I mean? Um, someone said if that if you go to like IMDb and stuff like that, no, he's not. He's not been listed yet. Right. I don't. I don't feel like he would be a. I, I think someone said that Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern might have found him at, at like as as an extra or something, but I don't think we've really seen him yet. I, because he. If he's this big of a deal and he's a, he's a casting announcement, we got to see him, Matt. I mean, we don't, it's not just someone – unless he is someone hiding in plain sight that we actually will go back and say, oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. And he really is maybe a forsaken right in plain sight, but we didn't know he was there. You know, what Green I mean? Man's like, real name does start with an S. Wow, it does. It does, <laughs> actually. Uh, that's hilarious. Is that so, Steve Bannon? He does kind of look like him. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, he wow. does. Uh, he does. Uh, Steve the Fate, and this yeah. other this woman. Have we seen her, Jennifer Preston? I don't. Is she given a name? I don't think uh, so. Again, where you pull is this as Mrs. Grinwell, the farmer. Okay, so she was. Yeah. Oh, so she was, okay. She was the farmer. Yeah. So we've seen. Um, we've seen her, but we have not seen Steve seen yet. Steve. Okay. So I'm thinking, but because the whole deal was, remember Dana, we thought was like, oh, okay, that's just gonna be somebody we run across and then she's like a super important character yeah also steve i mean i guess we have names like matt you know <laughs> but which i might there ain't matt. no my name is matt but no it's like hold on a second steve. it's like we go from moraine to land mandragoran to nineveh yeah. you know to steve come on no, now like there's <laughs> no <laughs> way i don't even do that <laughs> Wow, wasn't he the farmer? Uh, I don't think the... so. Although they're cast at the same time, so maybe I thought that maybe. Nah, you mean you mean, uh, you mean the the Grinwell? He wasn't. I don't think he was a Grinwell. I don't know though. Um, yeah, so so that's that's cool to see maybe who that is. It would be really cool though if there was this idea that in Tarvalin and around there, one of the extras or who we think is an extra is actually someone really important that they've cast. And is hiding. I, that's the kind of stuff. That's the deep level, deep cut stuff that I wish shows would be able to do more. Um, how do you pay someone to do that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, without using them. But Steve uh, Al Smith. Steve Al Smith. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I love it. Love that's it, wild. It. So one of the things I really enjoyed about this episode was the dialogue that we saw, and there were there were a few points when it hit really hard and, and the opening went well, not the opening, but at the beginning of the episode, when um, Logan is in the chamber in front of everyone and he's talking to the Amerlin seat, mm -hmm. his just, he's just blasting them talking about, you think you're so powerful and so high above this world, but I definitely, just, the things that he yeah. said to them was great. I love that dialogue. Oh. Yeah, you you know what the people will remember, right? I had an army at my back. Mm. They're all kind of staring at him. Uh, they will remember that one man uh, fought against nine women, <laughs> yeah. right? So that was that was pretty powerful. Um, uh, nine mighty I said I am reading it right now, and that I still staked that green bitch to the wall. That I mean, was and then, ruthless. Oh, dude, wow, everybody's such just, a ruthless comment. As just over hey, here getting us demonetized. I my mean, bad. Come on, my man. Bad. I was these, reading directly. These. Quote, quote, or, I accidentally, I oh accidentally said, I accidentally said the, uh, said, said, said the f word uh, during the. During yeah. <laughs> the um, so but no, he. I mean, he was just so brutally. I don't know if it's brutally honest, but he's just he's so upset at them for what they've done to him, and he's just. All right. Fiery with it. Um, and, and maybe it's a good, good dialogue for the viewer to sit there and, you know, remind the viewer that not everyone around the world trusts the Aes Sedai or, or believes the Aes Sedai are, are mm -hmm. what they, maybe what they were at the beginning or what they, they've been purported to be that maybe they've lost their trust with the people. It's a good little, yeah, good yeah. reminder. Yeah, because they, they're, yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely beginning to set up the, the split in the, in the tower. And I mean, they've been talking about it too. I mean, again, so each episode, by the way, you know, we've gotten more and more and more about like, oh, the reds have political power there. And then in the last episode, the reds are gaining power. And in this episode, again, 
um, whatever her name was that was in the bath with Moraine mm -hmm. said a yellow just stood up for a red. Like we need you here. We need this. And mm -hmm. so they're building this. I would not, I would not count it out if I don't know that she's going to be deposed in episode eight, <laughs> because it's like, we just met Suan. Unless you, right. unless you, it, what if in the next episode, we get Leandrin's punishment and then she, and then, and then, so then you have at least another episode of building it. And then episode eight is maybe we already go down the path of what, if, I mean, what if as, as crazy as it sounds, episode eight ends, you, I mean, talk about bringing stuff forward. What if episode eight ends with Suwan getting stilled and she and Logan leave the tower? Dang. That would and be put wild. on Fane, maybe put on Fane and Matt go back, and put on Fane takes the dagger. Yeah, and that we're like be... already there, and then you're like sort of now way ahead into some of the books. I mean, that's book four. Yeah, you that know, would be crazy stuff. So the only thing, yeah, we, we'd have to figure out like how because because someone has to spill the beans on it, it could be Matt if they if they if Lee what I kind of foresee is maybe if you wanted to go that route Leandrin would have to capture Matt and Matt would say yeah Moraine took us to this special spot and right. then she starts to figure out like well why why did Moraine do that because you got it you have to catch Suan um with her hand in the cookie jar you know what I mean I think um, you could I think I think it could be I th I don't know it sounds already that Leandrin's already got a bunch of stuff I would almost say that some of the rumors about Elida not being cast and her and Leandrin's thing, by the way, this is something this is this is definitely a topic that's been discussed to me in this episode. I think I could almost go down the path of saying confirmed that Elida will not be a character and Leandrin and Elida will be confirmed. I mean, what do you guys do? You guys think that that's going to be the case that they're going to go down? Because it already seems like Leandrin's gaining a lot of power here, which doesn't necessarily happen in the books. Not like this. It is more sort of Elida that's doing some of this stuff, and then ultimately she deposes. She all she she deposes uh, Suan. Yeah, Ryan. We, we, yeah, you take it. What do you think? I, I mean, it would make sense if they went that route. We've already had Rafe Judkins talking about that they're gonna they're gonna make changes like that where they're mm -hmm. limiting the amount of characters that are gonna be in the show from the books just for the to make it make sense for a TV show. Um, I, they haven't given us any reason to think that that won't be the case. So I think you're probably you're probably right. We probably can start saying this is all but confirmed that they're gonna go this route, but we. We don't know, but but it's the most logical from where we stand at this point. Yeah, the, the only other crazy thing that we because I mean, if, if Elida hasn't been uh, uh, cast and we're not going to see her in these next two episodes, then she has to be cast by by season two. We need her in here early because uh, she has a foretelling. The the big thing that drives her arc is she has a foretelling and she foresees that Rand uh, will be as significant as he's going to be in in, in the series, and it's some of her her foretellings later as she becomes the Omerlin that keep her believing in what she's believing. Now, Leandrin is working for the black Aja uh, and Elida is, is just being, you know, duped qu qu quite a bit. So that they are, they are different. Um, but could mm -hmm. they do it? I do think they could do it. I, I do. I do see them possibly giving us one head of the red Aja. Uh, and, and then Moraine was this head of the blues. Um, the one individual uh, who was one of the sitters uh, just had her name and I've lost it already. But um, the one blew this in the bathhouse. She's she's probably a goner. Madrin? So, Madrin? Ma Ma Megan. Megan. Okay. Yeah. So she she's probably uh, gone. But yeah, you've got to have someone uh, represent, be that replacement who would be strong enough. I don't know if they've talked about Leandrin's power yet, but um, Alana says that Moraine is one of the only ones who is powerful enough to kind of challenge her. Now they could do something where they say, uh, we haven't been to Camelin yet and Elida is there in Camelin. So if we're going to go there, we might see th there's a reason they can easily explain why she's not there, that she's an advisor uh, to Morgaze, the queen, which is possible. So great, uh, great comment here uh, by Halden. Uh, my gain is about to become a Demone. Yeah. Could that be because she did set up the Sean Chan 
Right. She's going west. The ships have right. been disappearing out there and she's going to look into it. She needed more rain to stay in the tower uh, to kind of run things and to be the head uh, of, of that of their Aja. So, yeah, I think she probably is going to be um, collared now. I mean, because here's the thing who run, I mean, if you're going to have so Leandrin in the story, she's not around the tower, right? She goes away from the tower. She takes the girls uh, to the Shanchen, uh, works with Dark Friends. She goes with the other Black Aja members. She's all around the continent. She is who Nynaeve and Elaine will be chasing later on. And then that's why Elida is pushed forward as the head of the Red Aja. It's so it's interesting that she's not it, that she's not here in season one. That she's not even. Uh, cast and, and has that that foretelling it would probably give too much away it's probably why they want to they wanted to hide her a little bit because the ability to foretell and if she sees rand it's just you know done deal we're gonna we're gonna figure out that's that's our guy so i don't know yeah love Good it. question though absolutely love it guys yeah well uh, anything else uh in the chat um yeah i don't know um I'm just I'm doing a quick kind of click through here uh, also in the episode. I think it's really cool just to see all of these like the emotion, by the way, of the actors and the different individuals who were in the hall it was crazy. When Suan was giving her sentence or Logan was speaking, like all of their reactions and their gasp and stuff, it just added to this uh, dramatic kind of feel or this intense feel that we had there. And it was it, it really felt um super serious there's so many little things too people were mentioning the yellows and that they had their their little pouches right with their uh healing ability their their medicines and so on uh Le leanne is there by the way as as the keeper of the chronicles she's she's there with her with her staff doing her whole thing trying to keep order uh which which is cool so all of that is just extra little tidbits that i think are are cool to the world building. I think if you hadn't read this book yet and you're just coming in new and, and fresh, you're looking at this world going, holy smokes, Moraine had that crap on her mouth and that it was moving it off to the dagger was doing stuff there. Uh, there's punishments, there's exiles. There's, there's so many cool just things that, that the Aes Sedai can do that can go through this weird portal, uh, two different portals like Matt, it's high magic, it's high fantasy. And so I think, it's going to be really intriguing for folks, and it's done top dollar. So far, I've seen that, I mean, Roseman Pike said this, and Matt said this, uh, has been saying it for a while. She's worked on a lot of big movies, a lot of big sets, and she's saying they 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 went all out, man. And I think the budget, the budget's going to increase, I think. So, yeah, yeah. I'm loving it. It's, uh, it, se it seems like it's going to be big. I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, I feel like these next two episodes are going to be huge. We talked about it. You know, you look at the director's. Uh, it's like, man, the the person who's directed these next two has worked on Vikings, a lot of other big projects. And so these were also the two that um, these are also the two that they filmed post when they came back from COVID. And we know that these are looks like they have some big battle sets set up. Did mm -hmm. Rand look different to you from this episode to the previous ones? He looked a little bit different. And, and it just it may just be that there was that much time in between the filming. But he seemed, I don't know if it was more oh, not really? gaunt, but but skinnier in the face, even. It just that was my first impression at the beginning hey. of the episode was that Rand looked different. Not Matt, what? sorry, Rand. Rand, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so hey, uh, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen here. That shirt's coming off. All right. <laughs> he's he's been trained up, you know, he's gonna have to do some so in, in Faldara, he'll probably have that moment with Lan, or maybe he'll have some. So they'll start working with that sword. Let me see that sword. Blade Master might be yeah. explained. Let's go through the forms here. And they start sweating quite a bit to, to the point where it's so much sweat, it's not even worth having a shirt on. And I think it's time for the world to just let the dragon ride again on the freaking winds of time. Okay. Yeah. So do, that's do, we, why. do we do we see Tom Marilyn again season one? So people are talking about possibly I think seeing so. him again. I think so. I think for sure we have. I, I think I saw someone say that maybe even Barney Harrison is is uh, is mentioned or is is listed in IMDb and he's going to be in the next two episodes for the eight. Yeah. Yeah. So right, so I think I, so. I think he's going to be there. And I think maybe Tom. But uh, if you, I will say, if you look at the, yeah, yeah it's it, weird. I agree. It is weird. It is weird. The way they shot it is weird, and it does look like he does the same turn twice. You know what I mean? It does look like they used footage over and just made a a different cut or something from it. So. 
Um, that's cool. I'll, here, here's um, one, one more big question here. So, Egwene, when are we going to see Egwene really channel? I, well, I don't think they're against gonna... the. She did against the White Cloaks. Yeah, I th- yeah, she she did her little puff, uh, you know, a spark situation. But like, well, she did two. She did one at the. She did one at Volta, and then she got Perrin free. Yeah, she did. She did. But I mean, again, compared to what Nynaeve what we've seen did, from the others, yeah, yeah. When is she going to have that moment? Because right now, it's Ny- Nynaeve is is who we're, who we're who we're rolling with here. And again, in the books, Nynaeve is is more powerful. But Egwene, I feel like in the ways is going to have some big moment. Something is going to spark and she's going to have to really use it because it took a lot for her to conjure that. And again, they don't have any control over it, but I feel like she's going to have one more big channel moment and it probably is in this next episode. And I then, would imagine. And then Rand is going to channel and it's going to seem in like the a final trickle in the sun. Like, you know, like, yeah. like, like oh my God. Like, but, yeah. Which is why when Nynaeve did what she did and they showed that immense power, I thought, dang, just wait till we see what Rand, Rand Rand's going to be able to do. Like, wow. Well, in the books, wild. Rand's like fighting in the sky and like lightning's killing like waves of Trollocs. And let like, the all freaking this stuff dragon going. ride again, baby. <laughs> oh my God. Let him. Oh, like when all this stuff's going to stuff, happen. We've just read it, right? We've only just read it and imagined it in our minds and, and, and read Robert Jordan's work. And it does paint such a good picture. But let me tell you, they have an opportunity here to bring in a worldwide. I mean, when Rand does what he does and the memes start flying out on the internet, like the, literally the dragon will, will have been born again. And at that point, if they, they need some epic channel moment or something like it's just gotta happen. There was a meme. Um, <laughs> somebody had in the Reddit and it was really funny. And it was, uh, it's like some picture behind the scenes and it's like, Rand's like in his makeup chair or whatever. And it's like, a, Egwene, the actress, uh, Madeline Madden or whatever. It yeah. is, is like standing there. And like, I think it's like, to make up people or whatever so it's also so it's like Rand surrounded by like three women and they're like Rand season four <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh ridiculous. my god oh that's awesome that's awesome yeah they did a good job in this episode uh for Egwene of showing her unhesitancy and her yeah. um bravery you know like yeah. she's as soon as they're walking through the through the gate at the end yep she's she's the first one moving in she's you know she makes a couple comments throughout the episode i think they're 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 doing her character some justice with this episode right she she is more um uh, willing just to kind of accept she, her fate her role she or believes responsibility. Marine, yeah yeah she's yeah, yeah. all in on marine right and and she knows that there's a there's a responsibility for these channelers it's really cool what night they did with Nynaeve in the beginning was to say that she had a wisdom uh, above her who went to the tower and was uh slighted and she feels mm-hmm. like she might be slighted. And something that they did here as well, talking about the the nobility versus uh, someone like Suan, who was a a uh, her father was a fisherman, right? She comes from a, from a small fishing village. Moraine comes from royalty, from Kyrian, from the nobility, yes. and so totally different worlds coming together at the tower. Um, so I think Nynaeve maybe she has that one experience, and she doesn't quite understand where Suwan is coming from. And, and maybe mm-hmm. Suwan could be the one who connects with Nynaeve a bit more and says, Hey, I was once like you kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and then she can, she can kind of rope her into uh, being more involved in, in, in the tower and, and filling, um, you know, living up to her potential, I guess. New question for you guys. Did you notice that Moraine said she could kind of like shield or how did she put it with land? He couldn't feel the bond, bond. anymore. Dis, like disconnected. Yeah, what right. that was. I don't remember. And, and, and guys in the comments, let me know if this it happens in the books. I it's such a small thing that I don't remember it. If it if it was a thing that she could mask it, I think she called masking it. And so he comes rushing in saying, like, I can't feel you anymore. I can't sense you. I, maybe that was a thing. And I'm just not remembering. So, OK, here we go. Masking exists in the books. Thank you. And I'm just trying. Do you remember? So, David, when did that happen? Or, um, you know, yeah, when when did that take take place? I I know we have a whole transferring of the bond later on. We we were already at that point in our book club, but like that was kind of cool to see that that was something that you could do. You could mask the bond, and then he's rushing in, and he had to go protect the Emmons fielders. He lost them last time, so he's going to protect them. Plus. She had to go to her little secret meeting. I just thought it was a kind of a, a cool thing as you explore the powers that the Aes Sedai have and the bond that they have with their warder. 
for individuals who haven't read the books at all, that's another like they can do that. I mean, this is this is all little stuff that is intriguing, I think. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, tinfoil yeah. hat time. Uh, you guys love Let's doing go. the tinfoil hat with the Game of Thrones. One of my uh -huh. favorite parts of, of that podcast. Mm -hmm. um, one that I've got for this next episode. You guys were talking about where they're going to go with this episode. Uh, or next week um, coming out of the ways my tinfoil hat that I think would be awesome, but I don't think they'll do um, is that they're going to get, you know, they're going to get uh, chased by, by the wind, the, the dark wind, the black wind, mm -hmm. Machu Chan. I can't pronounce Mach it. Like Machu you guys. Chin, Machu Chin, Machu Chin, <laughs> Mach like um, yeah, Ma Mach Machu Chin. I, I don't know. Machu Chin <laughs> or Masha Chin. Yeah. It's a, it's Something's wrong with my chin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're going to get chased and they're going to leave the ways in a way that they didn't anticipate or want to. And they're going to end up in the aisle waste. And oh. that the Aiel will be there. They're going to have that confrontation with Lan. And oh. then that is going to be the the details, the the dialogue, the, the backstory that comes out of there is going to be what reveals that um, Rand is is the Heron blade mm -hmm. and the Heron mm -hmm. marked wrist or, or hand. And that mm -hmm. he's going to be revealed to be to be the dragon that tinfoil hat. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I just, that was kind of my kind of cool mind thing. running in a, in a fantasy way. Hey, cause when you're in the ways, I mean, like, you know, wh where, where do you end up? You gotta, you gotta take a different route and you go, I mean, it can take you almost anywhere, right? It's, you can go so much further in the ways that would be freaking awesome. Just to, even <laughs> if they popped out for a moment in the IO waste and it's like, Oh no, I mean, it looks a lot like, well, kind of the blight. That would be crazy, man. I love a good tinfoil, you know, because <laughs> I think some things too have been have been cut. I, I really wanted to see um, loyal be more involved with the <laughs> opening of the ways, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and him yeah. be more hesitant and scared to go into them. That wasn't mentioned at all. I think that was a scene that was probably cut because there's definitely um, a, a dark force behind it. it. They'll explain it as soon as we step into it. Cause it looks freaking scary and we get the idea it's on screen, but yeah, man, I mean, Somehow the IEL have to be incorporated and somehow we're going to have to get that story. So w when and where d does that happen? It, would it be jumping there? Is it just going to be a, a, a story told in the ways where we find other IEL right. there who have died? Are we going to find other bodies in there that have been left over or consumed? I mean, all that stuff is, is, is a possibility. Yeah. We've only got two hours left basically of season one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. I feel like I feel like we still need a villain. We we still need to know who the dragon is, and we're gonna have some sort of final battle. We've got to get Matt's stuff resolved. I think we got it. We need to get Leandrin's punishment. So yeah. I don't know. I feel I feel like there's a decent amount of stuff, but I don't feel like it's it's too much. And then what do you think the cliff? What what's the cliffhanger to get us ready for season two? Yeah, again, I, I think for sure it's got to be something with the, the Dark One. We let the Forsaken out. We let him out. By by mistake, we messed up. Moraine messed up. She's been hinting the whole time that she doesn't know. Um, She says to Suwan, we've been searching for the dragon for 20 years, and I'm no closer now than we were then. Like I, And it's like, wait a second, you've narrowed it down to five people. <laughs> so there's there's you got to be a little bit closer. But she really doesn't feel that way and still feels like they might be getting outmaneuvered. So... And she could be making a big mistake by going there. Could be killing other uh, so, some of them inadvertently, or or whatever. I mean, it it's. I think there's going to be either they let him out of the prison, or it is going to be that we have the big air quote defeat. Rand believes he defeats Balsamon, and then we get like this kind of final scene, post credit scene, where the Dark One speaks from Shea Ghoul or something, you know, which would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, would it be better if we got more episodes for season two or more money per episode? I think it's got a budget of like it's like 10 million per episode, which is the same as the Mandalorian. Now, I, I do know that they said um, one of the things that was impacted by COVID because of they had like such filming restrictions was practical effects like the episode episode where the uh, low gain episode episode four where there's like the explosions and stuff going on and it's kind of a mix between practical and cgi they didn't they weren't they didn't have as many takes for that as they um would have wanted just because of like 
that was like during 2020, like right sort of during the lockdown and stuff. Um, and then their filming actually got shut down. So they didn't get like get as many takes and stuff like that. And so I think some of that, because that's really the only time where things have even to me looked like kind of weird or whatever are sort of like during some of the big, huge battle scenes and and stuff like that so it's possible you know that now with obviously far <laughs> less covid restrictions that could change yeah yeah that would be l'oreal <laughs> yeah i would change that a little bit just uh it's he's got kind of like a i don't even know what 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 he, what, hey. he, what, he, what he's got going on. in the books it's kind of he's got like, got like a get like a sick part you know he's got like a well yeah and he's right got, down yeah, the middle. He's the, got the, that the tufts, the eyebrows, and the ear hair is is on point. You know, the wisdom is is definitely showing. I uh, he, just something about loyal. I just want more of him. Honestly, I think they. It's one of those things they're going to find out. Star Wars found that when BB-8 and R2 and those those uh, individuals were on screen more, like it did well. Like the actors did well around them, and loyal feels like that type of individual that helps uh, mix some of the seriousness and change up right. the tone a little bit. I hope to see way more of him. Even seeing him scared like does a lot for us or something because he didn't seem he's kind of like, all right, going to the ways. I mean, so that part I would maybe, um, right. hmm. but then again, I, I told Matt when we were watching it, I said, loyal felt like in that moment where Dak says to Luke, Hey, I feel like I could take on the whole empire myself. Loyal was like broad chested, <laughs> just going in there. Like I got this, I'm put on my back. I'm right. the dragon. Well, well, remember some other things, some other things too, is that Amazon really just sort of is like started really, you know, recently has started pushing, Hey, we're going to push Amazon prime. I mean, they went out and bought a movie studio, like, you know, I mean, they went out and bought MGM studios. Like they're, they're going to be putting more money into it. The Lord of the Rings budget is supposed to be twice as much. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be like, so that would be like 20 billion an episode, which would make it the biggest budget of any sort of like television show. So, Mm -hmm. you know, keep that in mind, keep that in mind too. So again, and once, you know, this. I mean, they're filming it now, so we don't know that the budget isn't more right now. And then again, it's also hard to see with COVID restrictions what you know what they were able to do and not able to do. Yeah. And now yeah. they've worked with that CGI before, so it's a lot easier to do the next time around. Right. I yeah. I think I'm I'm impressed at what they have been able to do in season one, and I think people can say what they want. I actually have liked the dialogue. I have liked the, the, the writing, it, even the pace feels pretty good. I know you can kind of argue one way or the other CGI. People have talked about a little bit, maybe needing to be upped a bit changing costumes, but overall, I mean, I feel like what, what they're doing with the power and people have to get past the idea that, you know, who can see weaves and who can't, I mean, that's going to be hard because we, the audience need to see it and you can't just talk about what the I, characters uh, feel. Yeah. I so. don't, I, that's like one that like of all the things that there are for me to sort of like, that's nitpicking care about that is just not like, not one of them. Yeah. There's ways around that. I know that they, people say, well, there's, there could be some complications and there's uh, some inconsistency with like Moraine, not being able to see him channel, but then Rand just saw Moraine channel. But all, all I actually said was that he saw the darkness come onto her face and go off of it. I don't know. Right. I mean, it's either way. It's it's cool. We have to see it. The audience has to see her doing something. And I'm I'm I thought those I think those look good. I think that the channeling abilities and the power looks cool. You can even see it in Suan's hut. You can see the power cir- uh, circling the hut a little bit in that glow, which is cool. Meaning she's kind of manipulating and controlling that world, which is which is awesome. So, yeah, the, uh, the uh, Ogier are the thing that they're talking about in the uh in the extended stuff yeah yeah that's oh yeah okay in, in the in the extra bits right the um the x-ray stuff right the x-ray stuff. Yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah yeah the okay. like the legends and lore i did like that marine called him builder i mean they don't elaborate on that at all and if you don't know the books then you you may not even notice that she says it or what it is but that was a nice little easter egg i mean we saw a few of those in this episode but that was nice it was really quick that was it yeah there's but, like a uh, bow and a it, nod yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you think well there's an extra respect there why is there an extra like this extra respect for from an Aes Sedai for an ogier and as an audience member you would say okay there's got to be backstory on that you don't need to go into it you just saw it's that indirect characterization. We don't have to, Lo doesn't have to say anything when he gets that respect from the Aes Sedai. 
clearly there's something there and he should be respected and honored and what have you. So I, I like that too. Yeah. Agreed. The next two episodes need to be big character episodes for Rand. And I think they will be, I think, I think they've pulled us in all these different directions for everybody else, you know, mm-hmm. and now it's going to be, it's now gonna it's be go Rand. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, guys, if, when you get a chance, go look at all the freaking stuff that is on Swan's desk. People are talking. <laughs> I've been seeing different things like on her shelves. There are books. Uh, there's a white book. There's a lot of really cool things that they put right in front of us that I'm I'm intrigued. I'm looking at right now. And I did learn from this episode that the Amarlin seat um, waits on only one. Wo- there's only one woman she waits on. And it's mm-hmm. not Nynaeve or Egwene. Like Matt right. was like, just Matt a, during the episode was like, they drive, they're driving that home. <laughs> just a hint oh, yeah, of a smile yeah, as she's yeah. walking away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're, oh, just, they're, they're driving that home. Yeah. That's actually pretty awesome. So. Do you think Moraine is going to go into a lot of detail in this next episode while they're traveling in the ways about what to expect um, when they get to the eye of the world, she says that in this episode, right? They're going to, we need to go to the eye of the world. She says, I'm ready to tell you everything we could do while we're traveling. Is she going to go into all those details? Cause she doesn't tell them, you know, you all may be going to your death. I don't think she's a, not going to say it. She just didn't want to say it before they enter the ways, but do you think she's going to go into the details of what's coming or is she going to stay vague? I do. I mean, they spent like four minutes explaining Manetherin. In episode two, I think we're going to get some like walking with horse. Well, not horses because they're gone, but walking in the ways uh, and, and explaining stuff. Yeah, me too. I, I think that we're going to get some some sort of um, ideas as to what we're facing, because, again, if you're just walking up, like, what do you need to know <laughs> about the dark one? What are some of the things you have to do? That's that's got to be that's got to be said to, to, to some degree. So. Did yeah. they have did they have the horses in the book when they're going through the ways or are they on foot? My mind remember. was telling me that they had the horses, but I don't think that that would make sense. I just don't remember. And I didn't bother I don't to look think it they up. Did I don't because otherwise they would have just taken them. I feel like in the show, there's been no reason not to just do that. But I don't think they did because they were in the city of Camelin. Um, well, they were just outside of the city of Camelin. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can't remember. Because they're they down did. in the cellar, right? When they enter the ways for the mm-hmm. first time. So that would. <laughs> what is would Bella's questions. arc? What even happens with Bella? <laughs> and now I got to go look it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The horses. Do we know? Like, does Bella like, do we know? Like, is it like Bella? Is that the final? Is Bella at the final battle? I don't know. Be careful reading on that wiki page. I mean. Uh, someone said, yeah, they, they brought the horses. Okay. So they, did they? So they into the ways, my yeah. mind was telling me they did, but Took it horses. didn't make sense if they were in the cellar to enter, to enter the ways through, through the okay. basement. Okay. I mean, it's been a while since I've read it almost two years now. Someone said last book dead. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bella makes it. Hey, I don't know. I'm just, I, uh, is there well, a chapter una- in unaccountably survived according to the wheel of time, <laughs> can, official wheel of time companion book. Bella survives. Mm-hmm. There it's are nice, fan theories. <laughs> here we go. Fan theories, right? Let's just get in here. A, fa- uh, a frequent made joke is that Bella is none other than the creator, quietly overseeing the world in this time of great turmoil. The evidence of this is primarily based on how often Bella shows up. She's present right from the start and is mentioned or seen more often than all but most of the primary characters. In addition, she has lived and stayed in the story longer than any other mount despite being present at the eye of the world the ways so there we go falma mm-hmm. tarvalin um you know like tons of just and tons of other stuff wow that's kind of a i, I love that <laughs> maybe she is maybe she is people are all about the creator. Oh, assassinate oh no um my question is um tinfoil hat time again does the wheel weave bella out to be bill the pony in hey there There we go go. (laughs) i mean that's that's definitely like something you know robert jordan talks about all those different uh you know things that he pulled or or inspired by little nods to to lord of the rings and i think it's great i mean (laughs) paying attention to loyal's force wow um I think Bella's Bella's shadow facts. Bella gets, you know, that's true. Show would be Bella uh, shadow facts. Yeah. All right. It's cool. Oh, I will. Hey, you know, Robert Jordan, probably when he started working on this stuff, he'd watch never ending story. And he's like, there is no way I'm killing (laughs) 
my horse. Our tax man. Oh my god, that was so sad. That was like the saddest. Atreyu. <laughs> the sad... So sad. It's the saddest thing ever. But then at the end, he makes it. You see our see well, our tax. Let me tell you what the dragon does ride again in that series. That's for sure. Falcor is 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 riding the winds of of time all over the place. He is. I a love. Dragon. I, I love. I don't know dragon. what he is. He's a he luck dragon. Looks, he kind of looks like a Chinese dragon. Like you know, not like yeah. Like, he's a luck. They're the longer. Yeah. yeah. Our text is heart wrenching. <laughs> it is, man. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, all right. Um. Well, wow, I think guys. That's that's probably that's probably an okay place for yeah. us to end. I think we're I think we're ending on our tax. Well, wow. ending on our tax. Oh man, and Bella. <laughs> um. So anyway, hey Ryan, as always, thank you for coming back on, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be cutting this up into clips, all sorts of stuff. If you missed anything, Ez and I will be back talking more. We'll do some previews and some predictions and all of that stuff next week. We had two hundred people in the chat at one point, which is yeah, like in all awesome. honesty insane to even begin to think about yeah. um so we super appreciate that guys be sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button um remember you can check out the podcast if you want to come on the show check out our patreon <laughs> as and i do all sorts of other stuff too uh we do harry we cover harry potter we cover star wars we cover game of thrones so be sure to check out all of that stuff as well. You can find links on all of our channels and everything like that. You can follow me anywhere on the internet at Super Games Bros. You can follow Ezra anywhere on the internet at Womprat underscore 2M. There's Boba Fett stuff coming out as House of the Dragons coming out soon. I cover video games. There's new Legend yeah. of Zelda stuff coming out. We cover all kinds of stuff, and we appreciate each and every one of you guys coming to hang out. Yeah. I'd say you could follow you could follow Ryan anywhere on the internet, but um, <laughs> really, he's you can a, only follow him here. Uh, he's a dark friend. I don't know where he's at. He's like he's dark close. Yep. We'll put his we'll put a link to his stuff down in the in the, in the freaking <sighs> description. But you know the great thing about about this post show live stream is is that I know that the second the show is over, the mm -hmm. second we hit that live button, people are gonna show up. You want to know why? Because the horn has been sounded, the <laughs> heroes are here to answer, and the <laughs> grave is no bar to our call. <laughs> <laughs>